Hello, my name is Michael Prom, Applications Engineer for Applied Engineering. This video is going to show off the new FEA analysis capability in Inventor 2010. As you can see here, I have a full and complete assembly. So this is going to be the biggest difference between Inventor 2009 and 10 is the capability of doing analysis on a full assembly. I'm going to start off by doing a new simulation and you can see I have an option here of doing a single point or I can actually do analysis on multi um, different options. So we're going to get to that a little bit later. But I'm going to start off by doing a single point analysis. So in my simulation, the first thing I want to do is start adding some information to this. I'm going to start by adding in um, where my assembly is actually fixed. So there would be a fixed spot in these two uh, cylinders here on the end. And also where my pins are acting on this assembly. Now once I have my pins selected and where it's fixed, um, the next step in this is to actually start adding some forces into my assembly. Now, I have some forces that are actually happening internally on this assembly, so to make this a little bit easier to see, I'm actually going to add a section view and then come in and insert my forces. Now, one thing about inserting this force is, uh, you know, as I have the capability just coming in, uh, selecting the force, uh, I could do a static or I could do actual movement. In this case, I'm just going to be doing some static loads. And once these inner forces complete, I'm now going to undo that section view and add a couple more forces to the outside of this assembly. Again, this is very nice because I have capability of doing the complete assembly and seeing how they interact with each other, whereas before I could only do a single component within an assembly. Now, as I'm inserting these forces, you don't have the capability of doing this in the X, Y, Z. Cap, um, direction or also I have the capability of doing a force uh, perpendicular to that plane. Now once I have all these forces inserted um, the next thing I want to do is take a look at the contacts and uh, make sure that this would all interact properly. So there's a tool inside here to automate this process and it's going to put in all the contacts for me. Now what I'm going to notice is that they're all bonded contacts. This is not the way it'd be because they'd be all fixed. They wouldn't be all moved. So what I can do is edit all these so that they'll be a slide around as though it would in its uh, moving in a real assembly. Now with this complete, the one last thing I want to do is actually check my mesh. Now this mesh is going to be a little bit too small. I'll make it a little bit larger. Uh, the nice thing with this is when you change your mesh, uh, you can make it larger if you're not concerned about some small areas or make it small enough to see exactly where you're having your issues. Now with that mesh, I just want to check, make sure it looks proper, and it does. So my next step is actually to jump into my simulation. So I'm going to just run a simple simulation on this and see how the whole assembly is affected by these forces that I put on it. Now you're going to notice um, there's some areas of concern, so I'm going to first thing I'm going to do is play a little animation and see exactly how this uh, assembly is reacting to these forces. The biggest thing you're going to notice is that front clip is actually flexing quite a bit. So I'm going to guess that's going to be the max point of stress, but uh, as you can see here it's around 16. I'm really not sure. So in 2010, what they've done is added capability of coming in and adding some probes. So I'm just going to select some areas I think, oh, you know, that's a little bit red. That could be an area of concern. Uh, maybe on this other side, I see a little bit more of a um, color down below here where these pins are. Um, I could add another probe here. Even more so, my intuition is telling me that on top of this clip where it's dark red, this is where my you know major concern is. But again, with these probes, this is just allowing me to come in and make sure of this and let me know exactly where my max stress is actually happening. So as I zoom out you can see my different areas of stress and just like I thought um, the max stress is very close to where that clip is so that this outside plastic part is going to be my major area of concern. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy my simulation. Uh, this is also new and also a very nice tool because what it allows me to do is build off of what I've already started. I don't have to enter in any of those forces or my joints. That's all in there except for this time I'm going to change um, from a single point to be able to change um, different parameters inside my assembly. And what I mean by this is you can see I have a, a table that pops up and I'm going to select that point where that clip is uh, or that assembly component where that clip is and bring up the parameters. I'm going to come in and grab a couple parameters that I'm concerned about and you can see I've labeled those um, with the 
different names here with the rib and tab thickness. And on top of this, um, I'm going to come in and change my different parameter options. So I added a thickness of 1.4. Um, I actually have capabilities of changing that to 1.4, 1.6, 1.8. Um, also with my rib, I'm going to give different options here to give myself um, different configurations and evaluate these configurations and see how this assembly might react differently um, with the different thicknesses of this component. Now on top of this I have capabilities of measuring the mass. Um, I'm also going to be concerned about the safety factor and in this case I also want to know a little bit more about the von Mises. Uh, again I could do the whole assembly. Uh, I'm more concerned right now about that plastic part because I know the major stress in this assembly is on this uh, piece with the clip. So I have my von Mises safety factor mass and my different options here. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually generate these configurations and there's going to be six different options now um, between my assembly of different thicknesses and we're going to now rerun this analysis and see how those thicknesses is going to affect my mass and my stress. So I'm going to rerun the simulation and this time I can do a simulation for all. So this is saving me time of going back into my assembly uh, making changes to it Whereas I can see what changes I can do inside my assembly and uh, see how those actually affect my components. So I want to have a, a range here about what I want this to be as far as uh, safety factor. I also uh, can minimize my um, my my Bamisa's stress or I can minimize my max and see how that affects all those numbers. So as I make this uh, changes, you can see. Um, the numbers and how they are changed. Also, I'm going to come back in and change some of my parameters. You're going to notice that the box turns red, which means this does not meet my limit. Now, what I can do when this is all done and I find the um, configuration that works best, I can drive this configuration back to my assembly, which then continue on and everything I've done in my analysis is uh, brought over back into my assembly.